Hello everyone and a very good morning or afternoon depending on where you're joining us from today. Thank you very much for coming along to this webinar for introducing online courses designed to enhance the quality of clinical education. We should be taking about 45 minutes of your time today including an opportunity for a designated question and answer session at the end. So firstly just a couple of introductions. That's me Sarah Vaughan on the right hand side. I work for Epigeum. We're the organization that puts together the online courses and a large part of my role is looking after our online events such as this as well as our collaboration and implementation workshops. I'll let Tessa introduce herself now. Hello, yes, I'm Tessa and I'm an Associate Commissioning Editor at Epigeum. Until recently I was the Project Editor and spent most of last year working on the project that encompassed the two sister products, uh, Teaching and Assessment for Medical Educators and Teaching and Assessment for Nursing and Allied Health Educators. So just a quick look at the agenda before we get started. First we'll look at Epigeum itself. We're the organisation that put together the programmes through a collaborative model which is quite unique and I'll show you a short video that explains how this approach works. Then we'll move on to Tessa's presentation, Introduction to the Teaching and Assessment for Clinical Educators programmes. Following this, Tessa will show you a demonstration of both programmes to give you an idea of the content as well as how they look and feel. So a little bit about Epigeum. We were founded in 2005 as a spin-out originally from Imperial College London. Our two founders created the company in response to what they felt was a lack of timely support for researchers. One of our founders was doing a PhD at the time while working full-time and he came across issues that he wanted and needed to be advised on. And it would either be that there would be a face-to-face -face course in three months time that was being offered or that there was inadequate, dated or boring material online that didn't quite fit what he needed. So he saw this as an opportunity to work with universities to create supported materials for researchers, particularly PhD students and postdocs like himself, that gave just-in-time support for all those issues. And that's where we started in the sort of research arena within higher education. And in the 10 years since, we have expanded to studying programs, courses for students, and teaching programs, programs for staff, of which this is one of. So we were acquired by Oxford University Press in May of last year. Oxford University Press are actually a division of Oxford University, so we're still within the not-for-profit organization in a higher education context and still very much focused on creating high-quality materials. To date, in the decades since we have been formed, we have created over 78 online courses across 12 different programs, and we have currently seven in development. We're an increasingly globally focused organization and have worked with over 260 universities across 29 different countries worldwide to date. We've worked with many in the States as well, and this is a map just to show you what countries we have been involved with in the development of our courses. So now I would like to show a short video which will explain our development process to you. The story of an Epigean course. We come up with an idea and we consult widely to develop and fine tune it. We commission a team of expert authors to write it and a team of expert reviewers to help them. We commission a lead advisor who gives strategic vision and leadership. And we bring together a team of universities who form a development group to give feedback on our plans and prototypes and to make sure the product meets their needs. The collaborations we build are drawn from across the world and often involve input from over 50 academics as well as our team of in-house specialists because we believe that collaboration and iteration are the key to producing truly innovative and effective products. So we bring everyone together for a launch workshop at the start of each project. It's a great mixing pot where the creative juices can flow and expertise can be shared. We provide a week-long training course for our writing team to make sure they're able to get the best out of the online medium. And we provide plenty of opportunities for sampling and feedback along the way through a detailed peer review process. In fact, a typical product goes through at least five iterations before it's ready to be built by our in-house developers. Together, we're more than the sum of our parts, and our unique and rigorous product development process gives all collaborators access to groundbreaking courses they couldn't have created alone. Here's what some of our customers have to say. Our products are used by over 200 institutions in 25 different countries. 
To find out more about the collaborations we're currently building, click on the Next Steps button or get in touch with us direct. We'd love to work with you. So to summarise the content of the video you have seen, here are just a few bullet points. So the development group of up to 20 universities come together and share their experience at a workshop to help us create a really great online course. We recruit authors all under the guidance of a lead advisor. The lead advisor is the person who has the expertise in the area who can lead and shape the vision for the programme. We have a meticulous review process in place which allows the development group to look at the content of the courses, check that it matches their expectations and comment on it as well. Thus, the development group of universities are the early adopters who get to use the program and implement them at their universities. And then we make it available to other universities on a license basis, which is what we are able to do now with the completed program for teaching and assessment for medical educators and teaching and assessment for nursing and allied health educators. When it comes to implementing the courses, there are three ways that you can have them available at your institution. You can offer them as standalone courses so that people can access them in their own time when they want to. You can offer them as tutor-supported online courses, or you can offer them as part of a blended learning program, which is the option we do recommend for users of our courses. Um, we have a dedicated implementation team, two senior learning consultants who will be able to come to your institution and speak to you and help you uh, make the most of the programs. So hopefully that's given you a bit of background to Epigeum and how we put the programs together. I'd be happy to take any questions on that process, but for now I'll hand over to Tessa. Thank you, Sarah. So yes, I'll be giving you a quick overview of the Teaching and Assessment for Medical Educators and Teaching and Assessment for Nursing and Allied Health Educators projects. For ease, I will be referring to these programs as TAME and Tanahe. So to start, I'll give you some background. Firstly, as the slide shows, uh, the origins of Tame and Tanahe actually lie in Epigym's 2011 online programme, University and College Teaching. Basically, University and College Teaching had been bought by Quinnipiac University in the US, and there Dr. Lisa Coplett, uh, an associate dean in the medical school, had been very impressed with the programme and realised that it had the potential to be adapted and revised for a clinical audience, both in the US and internationally. She was very enthusiastic and contacted Epigym and so the idea for this Tame Tanahe product was born. Moving down to the second item, the main motivation behind Lisa's vision and really the most important reason why we created the programme was that there, there is a real need for such a training programme. Excellent clinicians are not necessarily good educators. Clinical students, doctors, medical students, uh, nursing students, etc. are taught by a wide range of teachers, including adjunct faculty. These educators have much to offer in terms of both the science and the art of medicine or nursing. However, sometimes the learning experiences of the students can be suboptimal because the clinicians lack confidence as educators. This programme helps to train the practitioners to be effective educators, meaning that they are comfortable teaching students whilst in patient settings. And of course, at the very core, is to ensure that future generations of clinicians are fit to practice. The third motivation, linked to the above, is compliance. Professional statutory regulatory bodies require that clinicians, faculty members, are provided with adequate training in teaching and assessment. So in the US, at the Liaison Committee on Medical Education, the LCME, requires that medical schools provide suitable resources. As you can see from the next slide, I'll quickly flick to show. Here it states, the LCME states that residents, graduate students, postdoctoral fellows in a medical school are prepared for their roles in teaching assessment. So medical schools must provide resources to enhance resident and non-faculty instructors' teaching and assessment skills. Going back to this slide, the fourth reason why the product was created was simply because clinical and healthcare institutions need to address the challenges posed by time, space and resource constraints. Clinicians are busy people and not only are they busy, but they are busy at different times due to shift patterns and they are usually spread across different sites of learning. You can see here an example from Quinnipiac University. So this was Lisa Coplett's challenge she had 700 faculty spread across 50 different clinical sites. 
Quite simply, an online course is the most effective way to ensure that all faculty have access to the same training and are brought up to the same standards. Who are the Tame Tanahay programmes actually for? Both Tame and Tanahay are aimed at all practitioners, all clinicians with teaching responsibilities, and this includes new educators and experienced educators alike. They both provide an excellent foundation in the concepts of teaching and assessment. And turning to who helps to inform and shape the Tame Tanahay products, a diverse and international development group was brought together for this project. So here on this slide, you can see the list, which also specifies which branches of the programme each institution was aligned to. The big names associated with the product are shown here. On the left, Dr Lisa Coplett. I've already mentioned that she was instrumental in, in getting the project off the ground. Based at Quinnipiac University, she is a key figure and dedicated to improving the recognition of educators across the health professions. She was increase, um, incessantly enthusiastic and a real inspiration. And on the right, um, we have Dr Laura Zurek, who is the Dean of the School of Nursing at Widener University. Having held multiple academic posts, she is very well regarded in her field and is currently a Fellow in the National League for Nursing's Academy of Nursing Education. The authors on the project were all worked together, so both the medical strand, both TAME and uh, Tanahay, had input from all three authors, Eva Agard, Janet Corral and Farah Bola, all coincidentally based at Colorado. However, there were the weighting was slightly different, and the main authors for TAME were Eva and Janet, and the nursing author was primarily Farah. As you can see, both Eva and Janet are very, very experienced, um, both directors in their own right um, and are experts in this field of learning. And same with Farah Bola, who is the coordinator of the Clinical Education Centre and Simulation Suite for the University of Colorado, the College of Nursing. I'll now move on to explain the actual content of the programmes. So there are two programmes, Tame and Tanahay. In each programme, there are two courses, and there are three to five chapters per course. So here, just to show you a summary of the content. Uh, course one in both programmes uh, is entitled Clinical Teaching and Learning, and course two, Clinical Assessment, Evaluation and Feedback. The core content uh, stated in the top row of the table, this refers to the online content, and this is the content I'll be demonstrating in due course. The optional content, so the 26 hours and the 30 hours, refers to downloadable activities or additional activities, which can be taken in your own time. So although both TAME and Tanahay are distinct products in their own right, they are context-specific, there are key topics which are common to both. Uh, these include preparing and designing teaching sessions, learner preferences and diverse educational settings, planned and unplanned teaching, communication skills, designing appropriate assessments, and delivering and receiving feedback. Some particularly exciting features to highlight are outlined in this next screen. So to start, firstly, there are clickable word clouds and definitions of key terms to clarify the terminology throughout, so there should be no confusion uh, as participants click through the screens. Secondly, there are very engaging, interesting interviews with educators and students. Again, I'll be demonstrating this later. Thirdly, I touched upon the additional learning, the offline learning. Um, so these come in the form of portfolio activities and communicative activities. The idea is that participants have opportunities for further self-reflection, self-assessment, um, research opportunities to really help put their new knowledge and skills into practice. So in the versions uh, of Tame and Tanahay, there are between 26 and 30 hours of offline content. And lastly, a real feature to highlight are the realistic clinical scenarios, which come in text form, video form, comic strip form, and they really help set the theory into a familiar, recognisable clinical context. 
As Sarah mentioned earlier in the webinar, uh, Epigeum programs are designed to be flexible. So the courses in both Tame and Tanahay can be implemented as online only, as blended learning, or in webinar form. And just to summarise before launching into demonstration, why use Tame and Tanahay at all? They are both highly relevant with up-to-date content for clinician educators. Within this, there are there's contemporary models and standards. They are both comprehensive and timely, and they both help educators to ensure that the clinicians of tomorrow are fit to practice. So that's an overview of the programmes. I'll now move on to a brief demonstration. As I have emphasised, Tame and Tanahay are distinct products, but not only do they share key topics, they do share common pedagogical features. And in the screen that I've selected for this demonstration, the, the features that I'll be pointing out will be common to both. So to start on this screen, this is how the courses might appear on your learning management system or within the hosted solution. I'm going to start in a screen entitled Clinician Educator Roles. Um, this is in the TAME course, in Course 1, Clinical Teaching and Learning. So, at the top of every screen, we have a learning outcome. This indicates what is going to be covered in the screen and what participants should have learned or should be able to do after completing the screen. On the top right, we also offer an estimated duration. Uh, here 20 minutes. This is so that participants have an idea of how long it is likely to take to work through the screen. Uh, these estimates include time to watch videos and to complete activities in the central section. So the central section is this part. Screens vary in length throughout the programme. On the right hand side, you will see little clickable boxes, or as we refer to them, pods, containing extra information about the main screen content, as well as activities, documents to download, definitions of key terms, and links to further reading. So this is a key terms pod here. Clarifying what each term or title means, uh, in this course at least. And further down, we have a useful resources pod. The resources in these pods might be relevant books, articles or web links which complement the on-screen content and which provide participants with more in-depth information. Another pod to point out at this point is the Your Context pod. I'll just flip to another screen to show you this. These pods, shown at the top here, Encourage participants to find out more about their own context, for example, the expectations or guidelines at their own institution, or the support available within their own department. They are customisable, which means that institutions can insert their own information. For instance, in this particular pod, institutions might want to insert links to their own medical or nursing school website or handbook, any page which outlines the rules and regulations. You will notice that many of the screens also have icons on the right hand side, like the one here. These symbols indicate four ongoing themes which are explained in the introduction screen of each course. So in the pod above we had a standards icon and down here we have a professionalism icon. This appears wherever the screen content refers to behaving in a professional manner or the importance of modelling professionalism for learners in the clinical setting. Returning to the previous screen, I'll move on to explain some of the core content. Uh, now this includes the high quality video footage as seen here. These videos are either film scenarios or face-to-face -face interviews with both new and experienced clinician educators and or clinical students. Providing interesting anecdotes and useful advice, these video clips prompt participants to think about their own teaching and learning experiences to question their own methods and to realise that they are not alone, that their peers experience the same concerns. So in this video, a very, very experienced clinician educator discusses the qualities of being an effective educator.
For me, clinical teaching is about relationships. Yes, I have an obligation to teach knowledge, skills, and attitudes, but to try to do that out of relationship is really a fool's errand. So that's a short sample. Underneath each video or audio clip, there are transcripts for accessibility purposes. It's worth mentioning here that all screens, all interactive screens, have a text print version. And there's a button at the top left of each screen. And uh, these printable versions contain um, flat text, which um, is compatible with screen readers and useful for those who are unable to use the interactive version for any reason. OK, moving on to talk about the next feature. So activities in the program, in both programs, TAME and Tanahe, fall into two categories, presentational and interactive. Presentational activities are used to present key subject matter in an engaging and attractive way rather than simply as flat text. Taking this screen on participants in learning and teaching uh, as an example, we first have a comic strip which portrays a situation where an educator is faced with teaching a diverse group of students, all with different needs and different skills. Further down on this same screen, we have an interactive graphic of a soccer pitch, which is designed to illustrate the value of interprofessional practice within the clinical setting. So here is just a simple way of illustrating um, how different members, different members of a hospital or clinical team can work together, all in pursuit of the same goal. This section on interprofessional learning is then complemented by a video called on the right hand side in which Dr Christine Van Kotz discusses the importance of interprofessional practice at her own institution. In contrast to the presentational activities, interactive activities require the participant to do something, whether this be entering text in, res in response to a question, matching items or putting items in order and so on. So I'll show you an example from the Tanahe course. Now this is a screen on preparing for teaching and learning on the learner. And halfway down, we have a paragraph on post-conference. So the meetings uh, during which clinical issues stemming from the day's work are discussed, analysed and reflected upon. This Blackboard activity is a drag and drop activity which asks participants to assess whether certain topics would be appropriate for a post-conference agenda. If we agree with the suggestion, the answer will stick. If we don't agree, it won't stay on the board. Essentially, we hope that by presenting the course content in different ways, we can help to keep the material fresh, digestible and most importantly, enjoyable. Now, moving to talk about assessment. In both programmes, assessment comes in various guises. Firstly, as I mentioned in my overview, Self-assessment and evaluation opportunities are provided throughout in the form of portfolio activities. So these are downloadable documents which provide users with opportunities to develop their learning by doing extra tasks. So here the activity expands upon the, the drag and drop blackboard activity and the user is asked to think about rationale as to why certain items would not be good learning activities um, in a post-conference session. 
Within the attached document, there are instructions, an estimated duration, and a space to take notes and record information. Now, there is an option to download all the portfolio activities in one collected document. Uh, this collected document is downloadable from the introduction screen. Of course, this is up to the participant to decide whether they wish to download everything at the beginning or simply to download as and when it suits them, so when they are on the actual screen. Finally, at the end of each course, participants are given the chance to consolidate their new skills further by completing an interactive series of questions based on a clinical teaching scenario or scenarios. So if I just show you the left-hand navigation, once you've gone through each chapter, you will finish with an application, a practice scenario. Now in this clinical teaching and learning course in the Tanahe programme, for example, there are three brief scenarios about a group of senior students. Participants are required to complete a classification activity, a close activity and a note making activity. At the end of the third activity, we provide some feedback, which can be then printed along with all the answers and provides a nice cap to the course. Now following the course, the practice scenario, going back to the left-hand navigation, there is a course summary, a resource bank which collates all the materials listed in the useful resources pods and the references screen. Following this, there is a course quiz. These quizzes are provided in a format that will allow institutions to add and remove questions after the courses have been installed in their um, learning management systems. Um, they are the default assessment mode, testing both the completion of the course and understanding. So that's the end of my demonstration. I hope I have given you a good taste of both the TAME and Tanahe content and of some of the pedagogical features. If you have any questions, please do note them down now or feel free to contact Epigeum after the webinar. And I'll now hand you back over to Sarah. Thank you, Tessa. And so if you have any questions, please do type them up now. Otherwise, you can contact us after the webinar has finished and we will be more than happy to answer any questions you have then. Just to notify you, we will be attending the Nursing Education Research Conference in April from the 7th to the 9th in Washington, D.C. Um, some of you may have already registered to the attendance. My colleague Fran Amar will be attending in person, so please do seek her out and have a word with her if you do see her there. And she'd be more than happy to take you through courses again or give you some more information about pricing as well. If you'd like to try a free trial, um, you can get in touch with us at epigeum.com slash next steps, or you can email us directly at marketing at epigeum.com. We also appreciate any feedback about the webinar, or if you have any questions that, you, that come to you after the conclusion of this. So thank you very much for attending this webinar. I think um, we don't have any questions at this point, but we really look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.